We're going to run a spider bandage now. What you need for a spider bandage is a few sheets of sheet cotton put together so you have a nice thick padding underneath the spider bandage. It's called a spider bandage because it looks like a spider when you get done making one. You just, the, the way I made this spider bandage was out of a, a pillowcase or you could use a dish towel or whatever. And I measure it, you know, for the length and the width that I need. And you just clip after it's folded in half, tear, tear, tear all the way down until it comes out looking like this. So, it's the same thing as the standing bandage. Beep, beep. And we, we always run backwards. So here we go. We want to make sure there's enough cotton at the top and bottom. And again, we roll backwards. <laughs> We're going to hold the end of the quilt in our hand here so I can grab my spider bandage. Leave a good inch of quilt showing at the top. We're going to run these knots down the outside of the knee, like here, but only on the outside. The reason we use a spider bandage is because when a horse flexes his leg, it gives and takes with each bend they make. It never binds back here. If you ever had an ace bandage around your knee, you know what I'm talking about. It gets tight and uncomfortable. Horses like comfort as much as we do. I made my one knot, and I'm going to lay those strings down, and I'm going to cover each knot with the next set of strings. See what I mean? I'm going nice and slow for you because I can whip these bandages on because <clears throat> I'm experienced. Next knot. But I want to make sure you get what I'm talking about. Next knot. Isn't that the cutest little dog you ever saw? Next knot. You can rip them as you go for the length you need. Next knot. We are at the bottom of the knee now. We could actually get rid of the rest of our spider bandage here. When I do my last knot, I actually do make a square knot out of this one so it doesn't come loose. But not tight. That's why we have a lot of padding under there so there's no risk of making things too tight. So now you need your quilt and your standing bandage, just like the standing bandage lesson. Keep your pin in your pants so you don't lose it. We're going to run backwards, and the reason we put the standing bandage on the bottom of the spider bandage is to keep it from slipping down. So there again, running backwards, taking our tension against that cannon bone. We hit all of those strings underneath that quilt. And again, leave a good inch of quilt showing at the top. We're just pulling against that cannon bone, not against that tendon. We're leaving a little quilt showing. I repeat myself because this is important stuff that I want to really drill into your brains. Let me get to the end. Again, we make our two folds. See? Our pin is right there, nice and handy. Make sure you run your pin down, not back, not up. Remember that. And there you go. Look at this bandage. It's amazing. Come on, girl, pick me up. If you pinch right behind their knee, because it's kind of hard to get a hold of a felt lock when it's covered up like this, but see how that flexes? And when she puts it down, see how it smooths out again? That's what's so beautiful about the spider bandage.